So Mustafa, thank you very much for joining us on the podcast. It's great to have you here. Thanks for inviting me, Ben. My pleasure. So, um, so we've got a lot to cover today. We'll, we'll discuss you, your background, and then some of your um, your initiatives that you're running in the market at the moment, and and get some understanding of the new venture Salesforce Works. Yep. So let's uh, let's start with you and uh, who a, a little bit about you and and kind of your earlier career. So I know you now as obviously uh, an experienced Salesforce engineer. Um, but before that, what what were you uh, what were you up to in your earlier days? So before Salesforce, I was working uh, uh, in the custom applications world, um, and I was working basically as a full stack, full stack developer and and freelancer as well on the side. So that was my background before Salesforce. Sure. So when you say full stack development, was, were there particular languages that you were across, or um, any particular technologies that that you focused on at that point? I mainly worked on uh, on the back end side. I worked in Java and .NET. And on the front end, I worked on these HTML, JavaScript, and CSS stuff. So that actually uh, made me a full stack developer. Sure. So, so I guess uh, back then, um, Salesforce wasn't your focus, but but your your grounding in um, in those technologies has probably helped in the long run with um, with Salesforce now going with uh, with obviously a JavaScript uh, framework for for web components. Yeah, of course, these technologies helped me to pick up with Salesforce. And there were some few few development practices and solutioning specific stuff, which is Salesforce specific, and some of the stuff which was you know uh, generally in the in the concept uh, in the custom application world. So, uh, yeah, it definitely helped me for to to uh, to come on Salesforce and you know uh, to pick up Salesforce as, a, as my career and as a platform. So, what what did attract you to Salesforce though at the time when you made that transition from being a full stack engineer into the, into being a Salesforce dev? And um, what was the uh, the attraction? Uh, so uh, the first time I kind of came across uh, Salesforce was basically in a company where which was a CRM shop. So I came to came across different CRMs, which was non Salesforce CRM, including custom CRMs and other non profit CRMs. But the different thing I found about Salesforce was it was a cloud based <clears throat> cloud based uh, CRM, uh, first cloud based CRM plus. Uh, so it was my initial. Um, my initial uh, attraction towards Salesforce, but uh, with the time, it, it proved itself. It proved itself to be not just a CRM, but uh, a combination of uh, multiple cloud platforms, cross cloud, marketing cloud, service cloud, community cloud. So, um, as I grew, my career also grew with Salesforce, and Salesforce was also growing at that time. So, it was the right time to you know jump into Salesforce and uh, work uh, on that platform. And and at the time, coming from that kind of um, that that engineering background into Salesforce, how how did you initially feel about the fact that a lot of things were already built for you? Yeah, that was yeah that <clears throat> that is also uh, one of the attraction. Uh, and we usually get this stuff already done um, in many packaged applications, many packaged solutions. But uh, the Salesforce was the first cloud-based CRM in which you didn't have to install anything on your computer or you didn't have to configure anything. So that was uh, one of the attractions and, you know, um, and plus out of the box features of Salesforce and the uh, the kind of CRM it is in general. Sure. And, and um, you haven't, um, you've never stopped kind of um, looking at new technologies and new platforms and new things, right? So you've kind of ventured into other areas at the same time as focusing on Salesforce. Um, how do you feel Salesforce as a platform and, and as a, um, I guess, a, a platform to work on now um, compares to some of the other technologies that you've experienced recently and, and some of the kind of cool things that are out there um, in the ecosystem? See, I would say that both, both worlds go hand in hand, Salesforce and other technologies, which is custom world. Uh, the uh, one beautiful thing about Salesforce is basically it keeps itself um, on edge as compared to the other, other technology stacks going on in the custom world. Uh, let me give you an example. So if you talk about the lightning components or lightning web components, uh, you can easily relate those development frameworks with Angular JS or React JS. So this is something which is easy, which makes easy for developers to pick up with that framework. And Salesforce is also advancing itself as the uh, frameworks and technologies are coming in the custom custom world. So do you feel that, um, like, because I know you've done some work in the IoT space. Yeah, yeah. So do you feel that that like expanding into those kind of areas benefits you as a Salesforce engineer or 
like is it do you bring stuff back into salesforce from from being exposed to those things that helps you as an engineer yeah yeah that definitely these uh, these um these kinds of uh, other experiences when it comes to working on the same domain in salesforce that experience definitely helps there so yeah of course you're right because we see that a lot of um, a lot of salesforce developers only want to work with salesforce yeah see the um, uh, i won't say it's it's like there's no right and right or wrong uh, it's basically uh, what you want to do so i prefer for myself i prefer keeping an eye on other technologies as well and working on salesforce too so this gives me a broader perspective and uh, of technology where salesforce is going and uh, what's going to come in future sure and the next um, point i guess which is also down to to people's preferences is um, contracting and permanent and um, and the different work types that are in the market so you've been contracting i think for for, for over five years now um, close to seven i think yeah almost seven years and why why is that your preference why do you prefer contracting <laughs> So see, that's, that's, again, it's a trade-off. Um, it's not a good or bad thing to do permanent job or being a contractor. It's, a, it's up to you what you want to do. Uh, of course, contracting has some monetary benefits, everybody knows, uh, but there are some challenges uh, associated with that as well. Um, for example, the, bigger, the biggest challenge is the uncertainty. You, you don't know when you're going to get free and you know, you also get some break between your gigs, uh, but to overcome this uncertainty challenge, <clears throat> uh, uh, what, what recommendation I would give is to constantly evaluating that what we did in the last six months, what we are currently doing, and what's the roadmap of next six months, and obviously where I fit in that roadmap. So if you keep evaluating that constantly, that basically helps you to minimize the risks of contracting. Uh, whereas in the permanent job you have, you get sick and like leaves and annual leaves and sick leaves and other benefits in contracting, you don't get those. So it's up to up to an individual what what he or she wants to pick. Sure. So when you say you're evaluating the roadmap, is that you mean like you're on a project and you need to know what's coming down the line on that particular project? So you're, let's say you're you're contracting to a big government department, you need to know, um, speaking to your hiring manager, speaking to the, the project manager, the project leads, stakeholders, you need to know what's coming over the next six months and what your role is in that. Or are you talking about just in the broader market, you need to know like kind of what the demand is and what skills are in demand? No, uh, so yeah, that's that's also important, but that's that's a separate topic. But yeah, my, my point was specific to the project. If you have a good relationship building skills, you can talk to people and you can get an idea of what's coming ahead um, in the next six months on that project. Sure. So then what about on the other side of that, like focusing on the skills thing, like how do you, how do you kind of ensure that you're on top of um, the skills that are going to be in demand in six months time? And, and as a contractor, I guess you need to invest in yourself, right? Because you don't have a training budget or you don't have mentoring from an internal uh, person. So how do you keep on top of, you know, what's coming down the line from a Salesforce perspective and staying on top of the, the demand for, for your skills? Uh, see, uh, so, so um, uh, a very theoretical answer that I would give you is basically keeping yourself uh, um, updated with the release notes and trailheads and, you know, Udemy courses and this and that. But the real learning is basically uh, contracting proves itself to be a real, real learning because as you switch across different projects, different companies, you get the same level of experience that you get in the consulting. So sure. different projects and different technology stacks, they, they, as you move forward with the contracting, the, these experiences teach you um, what's going, like what's, what's, uh, what's the latest thing running in the market. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned um, like staying on top of, of um, like what's coming down the line in your project. And that's something I guess people need to be aware of because contracts can end and you can have gaps in between your, your, your contract um, and, um, and, and I guess that's one of the risks, right. But from your experience, have you found that, that contracting in Australia is quite, um, you know, consistent? Yeah, it's consistent. Also depends on the time when you are losing your contract and when you're getting a new gig. So, uh, but the rule is the same, uh, just keep evaluating the project and yourself, uh, and your position in the project. Um, and yeah, between the gigs, it helps you to train yourself on the latest and um, you know, uh, keeping with keeping your uh, keeping yourself on the edge of the uh, technology that's coming, and the and the <clears throat> projects in the contracting also uh, are a big source of learning because every project is different. 
Yeah, it's it's interesting because we have um, like di- we see like different people want to come into the contract market and and sometimes I you know I, I say to people that contracting isn't always the best way to like if you haven't done something before then it can be quite hard to get a role doing that in contracting. Um, is that what you find like in an interview? Are you expected to have done the tasks that you're being asked to do in that contract? Whereas in a permanent role, you know you might be given a bit more freedom to learn. Um, the 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 fundamentals of that role in the environment. Uh, yeah, there uh, it depends on uh, company to company, environment to environment. Uh, but uh, yeah, mostly if you are a contractor, like they keep you on your toes. Um, you don't like uh, setting free doesn't suit you. So uh, if you are a contractor, so that is one more challenge. That again, sure. less time to you know uh, rest or you know do the self learning or something like that. Yeah, because they're hiring you to deliver a task and usually they're, they're hoping you've done that task before so you can just hit the ground running to deliver it. So like, because I remember when um, when Lightning components were, were like the, the big thing everyone was talking about and, and people that hadn't built Lightning components before struggled to get contract roles because, you know, it wasn't, companies didn't want to teach someone how to do that in a contract. They wanted them to, to come in and, and be able to deliver it. And the same again with recently with web components. When when we've seen companies hiring for someone with LWC experience, they're they're keen to hire someone that's got LWC experience, not Aura, and looking to learn LWC. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I well, that's what the bottom line is. Nobody nobody wants to teach the contractors, and that's where your same point comes into play. But if you keep an eye on the other technologies, I can say that Lightning Web Component is a more like React JS style framework. Like sure. the component is more like, looks more like Angular JS style framework. So that helps you picking up with a new technology very quickly. Yeah, nice. So to you, what's the difference between contracting and freelancing? Um, so both, um, uh, both uh, are same sort of businesses, but with a different, with different flavors. So, <clears throat> uh, so contracting is uh, obviously more rewarding in terms of uh, monetary value. But when it comes to <clears throat> multiple projects, freelancing is a more scalable model. You can, you, today you have two projects, tomorrow you have 10, and you can outsource and hire more people um, and uh, get your work done. So freelancing is more scalable model and contracting is more rewarding, but initially if, you, if it's a single project, contracting is more rewarding. So it's, it's again, it's a trade-off and you know, um, you, what do you wanna do? So I guess just to give some context to that for people that, that maybe don't understand the difference between the two. So contracting, you're basically exchanging your time for money, right? In like the, the, yeah. your, 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 your time and your knowledge for money. So you would typically only have one contract at one time. So some, you know, unless the company that's hiring you on that contract knows and they're comfortable with you doing more projects at once, you would typically do Monday to Friday, you know, eight hours a day on that project and you put in a timesheet and you're paid for the days that you work. Whereas freelancing in my understanding, because, and again, I don't know much about freelancing because it's not really, we, we don't get too involved in hiring for freelancers, um, which I guess is where your, your product comes in. Um, but freelancing is you, you are, it's kind of like a consulting agreement. You're signing up to deliver. It could be, it could be an ongoing supporting gr- agreement. Um, and it's, you know, at, based on hourly, is that right? Like per hour? Yeah, so you win actually the you, you you win the scope, and it's up to you how you want to deliver it based on the time estimate you have uh, um, you have agreed upon with the client, and uh, you can run multiple projects as well in freelancing. So sure. that's why I said it's a more scalable model. Yeah, so you're you're saying to one client, right? Oh, this this piece of work to you know integrate Salesforce mm-hmm. to this system is going to take me um, three weeks. Yeah, and and um, and they're comfortable with paying for your time for that three weeks. So as long as you deliver that in three weeks, you can also be delivering other projects at the same time um, yeah. that that might be a, with a completely different client on a different task. Yeah, and the inflow of the projects, how how quickly you get the projects, how quickly when you win the projects in freelancing, also makes a difference. Whether you like what scale you are doing the freelancing on, so sure, uh, and how then then you compare it with the contracting and you make your choice. Sure. Form building can be a tedious and complex process when collecting loads of data for enterprises. Solve this issue with ease through Form Assembly, an all-in-one secure web form builder with a robust Salesforce integration. 
This seamless web-to-lead form building connection boasts features including sophisticated data collection, the option to pre-fill forms, create and update records, and more. Their advanced compliance standards offer prime solutions for companies in the government, FinServe, healthcare, non-profit, and higher education spaces. Visit www.formassembly.com forward slash talent hub to find out why FormAssembly is the number one enterprise form building platform for Salesforce and how it can be customized to fit the needs of your company. And I believe you have, um, you've written an ebook on freelancing before. Can you tell us a bit about that and what people can find in it? Yeah, since uh, as I said, I was a freelancer in past um, and still I do some projects. Uh, so many people are, used to ask me this, how to hunt the projects, how to get the projects, because uh, this ebook of mine, uh, it doesn't cover the technical aspect of anything. It covers the business hunting side of it, uh, because I've seen the people are technically very good. Uh, there are many people who are technically very good, but they are unable to get good projects and they don't get response from client and then, get, then they get frustrated and they just jump off that freelancing is not for me. So my book actually covers mostly um, the techniques uh, of proposal making, what are the right questions to ask, how to trigger the client's response and how not to fail and, and, and common mistakes in the proposal that people make. So my book is basically, it's a very brief draft. It's a four chapter ebook. And I have just compiled all my first hand experiences in, in that ebook. And uh, you can like find it on uh, freelancinghacks.net. Um, so yeah, the, the ebook is all about the business hunting side of it and getting the projects. Sure. And then um, I guess as a freelancer, do you need to ha- have multiple skill sets, or or is that when you start outsourcing the role? Because you know, as a as a developer or an engineer hired on a contract, you're hired to do development tasks, and obviously, yes, you may be required to do some um some configuration as well and 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 things like that but as a freelancer if you're taking on a whole piece like it's a mini project right so you're doing a task for a client do you have to wear multiple hats on that and and like it might be um you know some business analysis and development and um and some administration depending on what the project is sometimes you wear multiple hats um but if you are short of a skill you can pull someone who is expert on the project and then just uh get the work done on the project basis and that's it. But the primary skill that you should have should be the client uh, dealing and communication skills. That's something that's a necessary thing. Uh, and then one technical skills you have, one technical skill you have as a core skill and then other skills are extended skills that you could do by yourself or pull an expert on the project basis. So yeah, that's how it works. Cool. Can you tell us a little bit about Salesforce Works and how, how that has kind of come to be? Yeah, so um, since I am w- working as a contractor in Salesforce space, and I have worked as a freelancer in past, so that actually um, uh, made this good combination in my brain to you know come up with that idea. Um, and I have seen some problems on both sides. For example, uh, for the SMBs, uh, the small businesses, they actually struggle with the implementation costs of Salesforce. Um, and they can't afford partners sometimes, and they are looking for some good resources. Um, other, on the other hand, the freelancers, <clears throat> sometimes they're unable to earn that well that they deserve because they have to pay uh, heavy commissions on their project fee to the freelancing platform. So um, so this Salesforce works as aim, is aimed to resolve that problem that uh, like clients can post their project for free, all their Salesforce related projects. And freelancer can come and bid on the project. And if they win the project, uh, we don't charge any commission on the project fee. Uh, so um, because, <clears throat> so uh, it, it's either like freelancer is earning less or maybe he he or she is basically quoting more to the client because he or she has to pay that commission percentage as well. Sure. So at the end of the day, it comes in the client's pocket. So uh, this will be a low cost implementation solution for clients and freelancer won't have to pay anything to any, any, any um, freelancing platform. So uh, that's one of the uh, biggest problem that I'm solving using uh, using this platform. Sure. So it's a commission, commission-less model, uh, cheaper for client and economical for freelancers as well. And if, if there are people out there that, that have never really considered freelancing because they probably, you know, it's not something that everyone knows about or really thinks about, it's kind of, 
yeah, some people a might not feel they have the skills or or don't know where you can find the work. How how popular is freelancing in the ecosystem? See, freelancing is is already a popular uh, area, and it's getting more popular during COVID nineteen because many people lost their jobs and they moved to freelancing, and and Salesforce is also growing. So, freelancing market is growing due to COVID, and Salesforce is also growing constantly. So that's that makes a good reason to come in Salesforce freelancing, and it's the right time. Uh, and Salesforce works actually. This uh, this like uh, this allows you to put projects on you know any anything related to Salesforce like integrations, config, admin, development, community, any cross cloud uh, project uh, with Salesforce. You can put like clients can put that uh, project on the platform and. Uh, uh, Freelancer belonging to any profile can go and bid, and if he or she is as a talent, they can win it. So, so really, um, people that are listening or watching this and they're thinking, right, all I know is um, is reporting. You know, that's all I know. Reporting um, is there going to be something like a client's actually looking for someone that can do their reporting, like down to a task like that, and then all the way through to like architecturing a solution and delivering that solution. Are these tasks out there, or, or do they are they usually a bit more complex? So they can manage their uh, project milestones. Let's call it a milestone, right? Architecture and the development and testing and this this task and that task. They can manage their milestones on the platform. They can also manage their project reviews and rating uh, on the platform, which will help them, you know, uh, uh, in the future projects. Uh, but when it comes to the payment, they can do it directly uh, do, through the, you know, advance, uh, partial advance or any kind of mode of payment that they prefer. Uh, and that's the kind of dream for freelancers as well to get direct with the client. We don't come in the middle to sure. anything. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but but in terms of like the the kind of work people will be able to find on there, um, it, it will range. You like every kind of Salesforce task could be on there, and, and like not you're not you're not excluding people. Like but junior resources aren't going to find work. Like you're saying, uh, people at all levels will be able to find work um, as the platform grows. Yeah, yeah, and and obviously for SMBs, that's a good opportunity to get the Salesforce implemented in you know in the lower costs and to reduce their implementation costs. Sure. So, um, can you direct us where can we find the platform? So it's SalesforceWorks.com. Okay. So yeah, SalesforceWorks.com. And if anyone wants to uh, to reach out to you and ask you any questions about your career or, or um, some advice on freelancing, contracting, or um, or even uh, the platform itself, where where can they find you? Uh, of course, I'm uh, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, and uh, they can find me on LinkedIn and you know ask any question they want about contracting or freelancing or any guidance or if they have any questions about the platform. So I'm open to new questions. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, looking forward to checking the platform out myself. And I may even put my admin skills to the test. Thank you. Yeah, great. Good to know that. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Thanks, man.